Hey there, and welcome to Throw Up Thursday. I'm your host, Dr. J.J. Kelly, the punk rock doc. Well, hello there. It's so funny. I'm always like really excited and loud, I realized, when I do my lives. But I'm in nature right now, and it seems like we should whisper. So welcome to Throw Up Thursday. I'm your host, Dr. JJ Kelly, the punk rock doc, and I will be joined by one of the docs, Olivia, momentarily. Let's let her in. There we go. And look around. Oh my gosh. Colorado. So beautiful. Hi. It is gorgeous. Do you see this shit? Are you in a meadow? Sure, Goule. What? Are you just like in a meadow? Kinda. Like there's this walkway in the middle of and I'll show you the water in a second, but I'm just like so hot. Oh my god. I had to come into the shade here for a second. Beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty rad. We were like biking around and working and I I've been teaching these two the DBT stuff by the river. Pretty awesome. Amazing. A dream. Hey Sam. Hey Allie. Hey. They're hi to the new people as well. Um, so as I was saying to you, I think to you, Olivia, that when Throw Up Thursday is on location, I think I'm going to start calling it Feel Feel on on Wheels. Wheels. Which everybody, that was Olivia's idea, Feels on Wheels. I, I was getting there with something and then, and then, I don't know, you, it just all came together and you were like, Feels on Wheels. Yeah. So when we would do the pop-up, we would call that Feels on Wheels. But now, just with all the travel and stuff, and the maybe the tour, I think we'll just call it Feels on Wheels. Love it. Good cool. So, okay, I'm going to walk over here because there's some people coming. <laughs> <laughs> so look at, can you see them? Oh, my God. Hello. <laughs> Angel face. Hi. <laughs> and look at this. Oh, my God idyllic stop stop wait again i need to see it more oh my god the the reflection of the cloud on the still bar makes my heart squeeze i know it's amazing that's beautiful amazing oh nature's so amazing okay so do we have any questions we do i have i have a question and and i also have a follow-up for myself okay so awesome i love it Yes, I am leaving tomorrow for my trip. Yay. <laughs> and right now I just like checked in and filled out my like quarantine form thing. And I'm experiencing a wave of like nervous excitement, but that is like feeling closer to anxiety. Um, mm, about what? About like, I think just like logistics, um, which is like, that's how I know it's getting a little bit like, bullshitty yes yeah Yeah. so that's where i'm like oh god what if our quarantine plan isn't good like just like what if oh yeah what if what if yeah yes so like i think that means that i'm probably veering into the land of like holding on to expectations of outcome like trying to predict how the trip is gonna go or like or like predict every worst case scenario so that when it happens, I'll be prepared. Um, and instead of like sitting with like being excited and also the fact that like, I don't know how it's gonna go and that's yeah. exciting. And like yeah. giving myself the power to know that like I can handle if things come up also. Yes, so when we are not effectively managing our anxiety, we engage in controlling behavior to medicate slash avoid our fear. Mm-hmm. That's what you're talking about. You've done it before. And actually, it's not that weird to do that pre-trip. No, definitely not. Um, but you, you're emotionally intelligent enough to catch it like you did, which you could, of course. And you have always done great with traveling when you completely abandon expectations. Mm-hmm. But now you have a you have a significant other in tow, so I'm not yeah. surprised. 
surprised you might yeah. have a little extra anxiety on definitely board. and i have like an emotional well actually never mind that's bullshit um i was gonna say that i have an emotional attachment to the place i'm going but i've gone to manchester which i also have an attachment to so mm -hmm. that does not and i have not felt in the same way that i'm feeling right now oh good catch dude that that's new yeah. one yeah and it's the same remedy anyway, which is give up expectation. Yeah, like regardless of how smart I make it sound, yeah. like to justify feeling nervous, it's also very simple to just say like, this is the first time I've traveled in COVID, so like, duh, I'm going to feel nervous oh, about it. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. right. Yes. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, like totally like that makes sense. Like very easy to validate. And also I have the emotional intelligence skills to like, not let that take over beautiful love it yeah it, it sounds pretty fucking easy huh yeah <laughs> oh just have no expectations <laughs> just go with expectations uh, for a trip yeah. but you know um it is so much nicer to do that mm -hmm. then then all kinds of like surprises can happen yes absolutely the magic you know the the yeah. stuff like the stuff that we can't even, and you and me, we're pretty good imaginers. We could really go wild with our imagination. Yeah. Uh, but the cling to expectations, like, kills the, you know, it always, it turns out better than we could even imagine. If we I know. It. And it, it really kills, like, the joy when you are holding on to expectations. If you're like, I have to have a great time. Then it's like when you get the great time, you're not even like, oh, oh God. Yeah. it's like you're owed <laughs> a fun trip. It's like, and it's that's such a icky, very yeah. tricky, subtle way that you like rob yourself of just being like open to the joy of a trip and that it's like you are not owed anything. However, yeah. if you like do your work and put yourself in the space to have fun and experience joy, then you get it in a very clean way. Yeah entitlement kills most things yeah 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 good for you yeah dude i can feel it i know you're gonna have an excellent time yeah the only way you wouldn't is if you give in to this controlling bullshit this absolutely clean. yeah and you'll self-sabotage it that's guaranteed mm -hmm. if you want something to be in control of it's definitely <laughs> that i don't want something unpredictable to ruin my trip so i'll just do it myself right yeah totally totally no you all are gonna have a great time and like i said before some time apart yes yeah a, even a morning here and there absolutely yeah great that'd be great for both of you individually as well mm -hmm. i think so have you all talked about you know like nervousness about the trip or anything yeah that? we've talked about that and we oh. also have set up um safe words to use with each other Awesome. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. That's great. So, that's, I feel great. excited um, and hopeful. Wonderful. I'm thrilled for you, hon. Good for you. This is, uh, you know, breaking the seal, right? Like the yes. first travel. Yeah. First plane. Like, yeah. it's, it feels like <sighs> relieving. Wonderful. Yeah. I can see that. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Great. Hey, <laughs> I can't wait to hear all about your tales. Tomorrow I'm going to go to sleep somewhere different. That's so exciting. It's like <laughs> Christmas when you were a kid or something. I know, I know. I'm like yeah. not going to go to sleep tonight, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Oh, hey, Sarah. Hey, Grace. Hey. Okay. All, all right. So, more. so then I also have a follow-up, and then I can talk about something else if we end up wanting to do more. Shoot. Bye. Um, so follow up from, I think it was last week when I talked about how, when I was leaving work, I had like a large panicky feeling and I figured out that <laughs> it was, um, because I was like robbing myself of my power and letting my gremlin take over. And since I acknowledged that and said that a lot on the trip, I have not felt that at all. Wonderful. Yes. Much like when you discover that stuffing anger causes panic attacks. Uh -huh. That you don't ever have another panic attack until you stuff anger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that is proof that once you are able to like really get down to the reason why you're doing it and speak it out loud, it's a thousand times easier to not do the thing 
a lot of the times it kind of just like takes that out, especially when it's a tricky mind trick like that. And you realize it's something you're grumbling on yourself. But also, once you notice something, you can fucking stop doing it. Yeah. The dude, suffering. That's the bottom line right yes. there. Yeah. It's a t shirt, dude. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and the suffering, what we talk about in DBT, is like suffering is the refusal to change and the refusal to accept reality. Like when you're trying to. And pain. To know, what? They refuse. The not pain plus the non acceptance of pain is yes. suffering. Yes. yes. Keep yeah. going. Sorry. Go on. Oh, no, that's it. I mean, that's that's what I, it's my follow up. That's totally great. Love mm -hmm. it. Hey, Joseph. So, wow. That's, I mean, and I love when shit like that, like you get enough skills under your belt where you can have that visceral response and you know what's going on at the time. Yeah. Like building emotional intelligence is all about closing that gap between when you do something and then when you realize what you fucking did. Yes. Yeah, and, absolutely. And when you can do it in the moment, like you just described, shit, man, that is pro level. And don't you feel so fucking powerful? Yeah, it feels badass, especially because the whole thing was about me not letting myself, yes! and my gremlin not letting me feel powerful. And then it's like, oh, this kitty, my gremlin is shit, and I am awesome, and I know what the fuck is up, and I can just yes! speak it into existence, and then I am more powerful. Yep. Fuck yeah! <laughs> Hella punk. <laughs> That, I mean, shit, if that's not punk as fuck, I, I know. Like Stomp on the head of my gremlin like a whack a mole. <laughs> Be like, I'll see you in a couple days, bitch, and I'll know what to do next time. Awesome. Awesome. For those of you who don't know what the gremlin is, Rick Carson's taming your gremlin is pretty much required reading for everybody that I see. We mm -hmm. talk about it all the time. It's so fun. All right. Fucking go, you. Okay, last one. Last one. Okay, more of like a topic, not a question, but without getting into details, some oh. me and some of the docs. Oh, have... Jesus H. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Here we go. We had a conflict. Um, and we all got together. Uh, yeah, what, you know, shit happens when you're in a group shit. of people. Happens. And you are close to people and you love people, there's going to be conflict. That's inevitable. Yep. Um, we got together today and we like squashed everything, discussed it, and it was really stricken by how beautiful it is to engage in conflict with people who are yep. dedicated to using their skills in a yep. really effective manner, where conflict is like never fun, but it becomes like this like block that is added to the relationship and the foundation and like to be able to discuss like how we feel and move forward from it and like in a really open and vulnerable way where everyone owns their piece of it and speak like the uglies in their brain yes. and take acknowledgement for it with like no judgment and full accountability it creates like such an inspiring space to be a part of and to like feel safe or like loved enough to yeah. um express when we've been hurt and know that that is going to be taken seriously and people are going to hold themselves accountable to being better i think that is like such an amazing thing that we have all built together yes and that is partly because mostly because we're doing dbt so of if you of course it is <laughs> People on the street don't do that kind no. of like shit. No. So. I mean, you are all so trained. You know, and the downside of that, of course, is your gremlin is sophisticated now. And so you, you all can bullshit around, you know, and I don't know the details, thankfully, mm -hmm. um, or many of them. But uh, I don't, and I don't know if my initial email that's like the horse shit about this situation was passed around or not. Um, I think it's a funny way to start an email. You know, the real horse shit about this situation, Dr. JJ Kelly. So, um, and then the next, after you all kind of weighed in individually, and the next thing that I wrote to you, which I hope all, everybody read, I mean, my heart just like, 
cracked open and yeah. I was so proud and and I you know resolution hadn't happened this meeting hadn't happened all I know is that I read what each of you wrote and it was the most like fucking real eating of a shit sandwich you all took a bite yeah we shared it. each other I know it's so amazing yeah. and when you have the emotional intelligence and specifically like mindfulness and then emotion regulation because nobody likes to eat their shit sandwich there's shame involved yes everybody pretty much knows that's the way to do it it's just take responsibility for your fuck up but nobody likes to do it and most people get defensive most people without skills get defensive to the point of never fucking yeah. doing it where you all had willing participants in resolution of a conflict that's the only way to resolve conflict if is if every participant is willing mm -hmm. and that's what you don't get on the street much because people get so fucking freaked out their egos are so fragile that they won't say hey you know what i fucked up will you forgive me please like, it's that easy. They're worried yeah. the person's going to, like, rub their nose in it more, which does happen. Mm -hmm. But you got to, like, take the fucking leap. Yeah. For you, not even for the other person, but, like, yeah. for yourself to be like, I can hold myself to a higher standard yep. and be radical in the way that I choose to be kind. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes, when defensiveness is a cue for when we feel justified shame. Yes, God, that's yeah. so well worded. Yes, like just like you don't, and you don't have to like if you behave defensively and you're able to catch it in the moment. Yeah, you're gonna feel a hit of shame even doing the healthy thing, catching it, and to just not judge yourself for that and just mm -hmm. use it as a cue for information this gives me information about my own process yes yeah it, it shows me it, it like shines a light on work that still has to be done within me and i'm willing to do that work absolutely do that work to be expand and be a more rich human being with more joy i mean fuck yeah i yeah. noticed that i do a thing we're also, we talked about how there was like valid anger and how it was easy to hide behind that valid anger to justify defensiveness. And also I noticed that I went to confusion as a way to- Oh yeah, defensive. dissociative confusion. And just oh, like, what's get it. happening? And like how that's such a tricky way. And I realized myself that when I'm feeling really confused, usually I'm being really defensive. And I think hiding that's it a common one. Way. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah, yeah, you're not confused unless you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're dodging what the truth of the matter is. You're yeah. smart enough to fucking figure it out if you want to. Absolutely. Now, I will say that sometimes genuine confusion does happen when we're a little bit overwhelmed in the situation. So, you know, give it a beat mm -hmm. and then go back to it. But the one you're talking about is like... It's like a willful ignorance, kind of. Yeah, definitely. And that there's like a way confusion is intellectualized fear. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> there's the other scene. Ooh. <laughs> That's good. Say Grace. that again, please. Hey. Alex. Confusion as intellectualized fear. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. totally what it is. Yes. Oh my God. And Damn it. That's so good. I wish you were mine. <laughs> and then to also like notice that like to be like okay i'm feeling defensive and then have enough like ego and self-love to be like i'm not going to shame myself for that because i am holding myself accountable and knowing that i will figure this out yes. and that i'm going to dedicate myself to like doing the work necessary and then i don't like to expect myself to like get that email and then immediately go i know exactly what i did in my you know like that yes. is uh, unreasonable like yes of course you're going to go through the stages of being confused and defensive and yes. angry. And all of the docs have the ability to experience those emotions and move through it and dig underneath them, not stop there. Just breathe. Just shut the fuck up and breathe. <laughs> breathe. Deep <laughs> abdominal breaths. Don't talk. No yeah. talking yet. Get yourself back to baseline a little bit. Yes. Before you talk and make a mess. Um, I want to 
clarify one thing you said. You said the ego and self-love. Ego strength is what she meant, folks. Yes. That's different than the ego that is the gremlin whose job it is to fuck you over. These are just psych terms. You get used to hearing us say them. But that one, you know, you meant the opposite of yes. what you said. So I just wanted yeah. to clarify that. Because I know you knew what you were talking about, but other people may not have. appreciate heard. that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. That yeah. was beautifully said, too, dude. Yeah. Wow. And feeling... look at these comments. Like, everybody's saying such smart shit. It's such a privilege. And, like, I'm so grateful to be part of this group and, like, be with people who are dedicated in a similar way. And, like, it when everyone raises the bar, like, you also yes. raise your own. Like, it's, like, it's important and necessary and beautiful. And I'm almost, like, I'm grateful for this conflict because yes. we all learned shit that we needed to learn. And it was inevitable. Yep. Yep. I'm grateful it happened on our month off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Selfish grateful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, honestly. You, like... But that's better for you all, too, because you figured it out yourselves. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I mean, our, it, everybody's got to be so fucking proud of themselves. It's so rad. Yeah. Big so win. rad. And stronger for it individually and as a collective. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what it's all about, dude. Yeah. And right? if you also would like to gain the skills to deal with conflict in a graceful and beautiful and shit-eating way, go to <laughs> drjjkelly.com and schedule your free console. Excellent. Yes. Do that. Do that. Because, my gosh, you can't, you can't get to the, your guys pro level without some help, without some instruction. Um, and you know, you all are going to be changing the world long after I'm gone. So this is, this is pretty exciting stuff. It felt radical. Like it is radical. Of course yeah. it is. That is the word I haven't, I specifically have not been using that word, um, because people usually attach it to, um, politics and it's a yeah. little bit more palatable marketing wise to just say punk rock doc, yeah. which is authentic too, but you're absolutely fine. It is, yeah. it is radical change, radical thinking, radical ways of being with each other. And God damn it, if we don't need that right now. Yeah. I've had the phrase radical kindness in my oh, head. And yep. like, I've There's a had... book about radical candor. Someone yeah. has coined that phrase as well. Like, yep. Yeah. When you are authentic and you are speaking your truth, you know what? My goal is for that to not be radical at all, to be totally fucking normal. Then mm -hmm. my job will be done, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, and you'll hang out in Colorado on your little yeah. <laughs> meadow. Yeah, should have brought that fishing pole you got me <laughs> for my birthday, Sam. We even talked about it. I blew it. I blew it. Well, I am very much looking forward to when I'm back and our coaching calls start up again, uh, I'm proud of you all and pass it on. And thanks for co-hosting this too. It's always a pleasure. So fun. Love it. I love you all. I love you guys. I love everybody. <laughs> I love the world. So thanks for joining us at this Feels on Wheels edition of Throw Up Thursday. Hope you uh, even vicariously barfed some of your stress and left feeling better. Join us again next week. Bye. Bye. Get in touch with me, Dr. JJ Kelly, the punk rock doc at drjjkelly.com.